for you. St Helens will kick off in their white strip with that famous red V across the chest. The Castle Tigers looking for a first Super League win of the season, beaten at Hull last week. Will today be the day they get their first win. The Betfred Super League is back underway on Channel 4, and it's Castleford who've got first use of the ball. And the win, we just saw it there holding up the kick as George Griffin makes his way forward. And Lee Radford, we heard from him early, he wants his team to start quickly, and they're moving it wide quickly. Good sliding defence. Lewis Dodd, the man who kicked the winning drop goal last week with a tackle. He certainly did, and this man who has the ball in his hands now. Well, he was fantastic last week over that win at Hull. Beretta for Rymore, two tries to his name, and 191 metres with ball in hand. He'll be a constant threat out of backfield. But for me, it's this now, it's the width of the ball that they're moving. Long pass to long pass. Well, they've got numbers if they go over the top. Miller, can he get it away to Evels? He does, now they're moving wide. And a chance down the far touchline. And Castleford are racing away now. Evels on the inside, he's dropped it. Niall Evels has just dropped a certain try for Castleford. What a start that would have been for the Tigers. They did search for numbers out wide, but they couldn't get it over the line. Well, it was a near perfect start, Mark, wasn't it? They start off the set, moving the ball from left to right, and then work the way down that channel before it's width of pass to Widdip, to Miller, into that danger man, Jacob Mamo. We spoke about him pre-game, and Niall Evels, all he has to do is the more simplest part of that move. And the chance goes begging for Castleford Tigers. Great start from them. It was a great start. St. Helens trying to defend narrow. We're exposed there. A little messing about in the scrum. But Saints will get it. Big following have made their way over there. Stood behind the post away to the right. They'll be hoping it doesn't rain. You can see them. They're packed in. Great to see a full house in the Super League. The Saints are looking to offload on their own 30-metre line. We're trying desperately to wrap up Matautia, who shows his sheer strength as Lussick gets it away on the near side. Yeah, Sione Matautia there. I thought he was outstanding in all two games in Australia, as his back row partner missing today, Curtis Siridan. Ball now works its way to Lomax. Now Bell. Well, you mentioned Curtis Surin, and he was when we initially got team he was expected to play today, but ill today. So James Bell comes into the starting lineup as the ball moved out wide to Hurrell. They're just over halfway. Quality vision there from Lomax, catch and pass under pressure from McShane. Here's a high kick. Let's have a look at the wind. So they are going into the wind here. This is going to hold up Evans. Oh, that's a great catch. And he got hit for his trouble. He knew what was coming. That was brilliant play from the fullback. Yeah, it certainly was. And it was allowed to do so because of the work that George Griffin does on Lewis Dodd. Lewis Dodd's kicking game was exceptional last week. And as a result, Niall Avalds is just able to take that ball in under the pressure from the Red V. Tackle goes in. Oh, there's a problem here. Oh, he's in trouble, Percival. Percival, there. he almost... I don't want to say a trick, but his leg got caught in the tackle, didn't it? It oh, didn't look well. right, and he's in a bit of pain here. This is a problem. As Castleford will kick downfield, and this well, could be a, problem a potential 40-20 kick. What a kick it is. What a kick from Castleford Tigers. Paul McShane, former man of steel. Look, this is the kick. He was right on the 40-metre line. That means Castleford will get the ball 15 away, but they've got a big problem. This is it there. Percival's his shin or his lower leg just got caught. That didn't look good, he's hobbling back into the line car, but he looks in a world of trouble at the moment. Well, he's still not there, and if Castleford to recognise, they go to him. They want to tie up through the middle of George Griffin. Paul McShane there, his 199th appearance for Castleford. And that 40-20 could be huge. Here's McShane now, gets it away. Ball taken in by Albert Vette, making his debut. Former Hull Kingston Rovers, there is Percival hobbling around defensively. Ah, Castleford gonna go that way, McShane will go to Widdup, gets it away to Miller, Miller to Evels, Evels thought about going out wide but Saints slid across nicely. Inside the 10 they are, Miller, formerly of Wakefield, drops the ball back underneath, Saints defend it well. Percival out on this near side, he's still hobbling around, are they gonna test him, they're gonna go this way now, Miller wrapped up, good line speed from the Saints. 
McShane is looking. Widdop is to his right hand side. Here he goes now to Widdop. Widdop's just going to dribble the kick through. He's picked up. Big chance. Ball back on the inside. What a tackle from Percival. Well, he might be hobbling around on one leg, but he's just saved a certain Castleford try there. That was a great tackle. We'll talk about a try saver. That's exceptional to get off that pass and to hold. I think it's Mallet. Just look at the red shirts in and around it. And that's one of the features about this state side over the last four or five seasons. It's their ability to turn up when all else looks to be failed. Conrad Hall now taking the ball and he's welcomed by a committee. Well, they're, the flying Tigers. In. they're flying in the Tigers. The Saints fans are appealing for a penalty. Liam Moore's having none of it at the moment. These are the tough carries, these are the hard yards. Percival again puts his hand up. What an effort. If anything sums up a block, that last 60 seconds sums him up to a tee. Absolutely. And a terrific start from Castleford. Lee Radford mentioned about how he wanted to start fast. Well, you know, a break and a 40-20 and just applying a pressure now. Wormsley, what another Saints. big run that is. Yeah, Saints appearance 250 today for Alex Wormsley as Lomax will kick the ball, and that, you have to say, is a pretty decent outcome from a Saints side who started a metre off their own line. They're going to turn it over inside the castle at 20. Well, it's a perfect set because they were under so much pressure, weren't they, early on, as Mamo now to Faraimo, and Sione Matautia, Morgan Knowles, and Matty Lee's all in there. I don't believe this Castleford side can take the game set for set with St Helens. I think their best option is to move the ball around make St. Helens feel ball. leggy, make them work harder than they have to do. Yeah, good spot, mate. Oh, a, I think he's a pulled out there, yeah, it's a penalty. It's just silly from Percival. I think it's tackle four as well, those are real coach killers. You see there, Percival, he can't help himself, just pulls the ball away. But well, we were going to get a catch then from Gareth Widdop's kick, Percival. Well, the good and the bad, the great tackle on his own line, but he's invited Castleford over halfway again. One. And they're down below us here. Come on, Sione. Hold. McShane waits at dummy half. Widdop, busy, gets it to Miller. Miller again, they're looking to expose that far side. And again, they'll get it away to Mamo. And Mamo down the sideline. Good tackle from Ritson. Did just enough to get back. Well, so certainly is some pace out on that far side of the field in Mamo and Ritson. An opportunity for the Mary Port born Cumbrian. Wearing the red V today. All the way, Joey. Ball no, over on the far him. side. Here now is Miller. Miller gets it away. Win it. Little show and go. Gets it now wide. Here's a chance. Oh, the foot pass was in front. Broadbent's pass. The idea was right. The execution wasn't for Raimo. Well, he may have had a stroll in, in the corner. This pass, though, the no look pass. But they've created space once again, Mark. I mean, they're threatening St. Helens. Out on the edges, really it was Mamo really inside the me. first couple of minutes, on. and on that occasion there, if Broadbent can execute Stand that the pass, there's a certain four-pointer, a bright okay, start from Castleford. Go. Well, Lee Radford said that he wanted his team to start strongly early on, they have done, the only Hold. thing they haven't Move done in this opening eight minutes is put some Hold. points on the Hold. board, Hold. but Hold. Saints penned in their oh, own end, and Hurrell this time slow to get to his feet as Ritson, who was the game's most prolific try scorer last year, 33 and 31 games for Barrow, and now he's earned his side a penalty as well. well that's one of the okay, good play. parts about T. Ritson. I played against him with Cumbria v Jamaica last October, and his ability to win penalties out of backfield with good footwork, but on that occasion, I think it's Paul McShane who has a little tug on the ball, and St. Helens boys, will start just Go. over the halfway line and into the territory of Castleford Tigers. Lees with a strong carry, just over the halfway line. No James Roby today, the veteran. Rested, we understand it, for this one. As Matautia gets through a gap, quickly closed down. And Lussick, a rest off him. He was ever present last year for St Helens, but most of those off the bench. I guess when you've got one of the game's greats in front of you, you've got to be patient, and patient he has been, but very much a part of the St Helens' success. Last season, here now is Dodd, gets it away to Lomax, moves it wide, here's Wellsby, Wellsby gets it to Hurdle, great pass, Ritson for the corner, Ritson for the corner, he thinks he's got this one down, this would be a sensational try, the question is, has he got it down, let's hear from our video referee who says, thinks it's a try on the field, Liam Moore. 
Okay, so we're checking touch and touching goal as well as grounding play, so we can go straight to the corner view. Ritson's in possession of the ball, sets off. Okay, pause it there. His knee is in touch, so I've made my decision. So, the video referee had a look. We thought T. Ritson had come up yeah, got with an absolute wait. special, yes, no, but on, his leg up, yeah. went over the sideline. No try for Saints. Couldn't have been any closer. Yeah, T. Ritson, you the mentioned it, Mark, earlier. 70 tries in 73 games with Barrow, oh, no, no. and the boy can finish, but on that occasion, Castle for Tigers' last-ditch effort in defence was brilliant. Jacob Mamo, Jordan Turner, everybody pushing off over, and ultimately up. saving a try. And this oh. opening 10 minutes, Mark, we're in for a game here. OK, George, go. Well, two teams who like to play and throw it around and score great tries. That was almost oh. one of the very best. Really? Still no, maintain that rule change oh. to take out the corner oh, wow. flag, one of the best things they ever did in rugby league. Albert Vettier and Matty Lees head on each other. Two, Two opposite numbers move. going at it. Hold me. Hold. Lees, of course, he loves the contact. He does. Here's Miller. 200 appearances for Wakefield Moving. Trinity just up the road. Hold Made the Go short switch in the, in the off-season. Here now, forward goes Griffin. Good That's carry from him. Good carry, finds his front. Quick play of the ball. McShane to jump off the back. It's Lawler. Can't get the ball away. I'll tell you what, Sione Matautia. What a start he's had. What a, Physical player he is. Yeah, he's been brilliant. You know, he spent seven seasons out in the NRL, 124 appearances, and the last two of Saints have been arguably two of his best. Comfortable catch for Jack Wellsby. Castle will be more than aware now. The back to back young player of the year in Super League. Player of the match last week when Saints become world club champions. Now Saints working their way forward. A bit of an arm wrestle developing here as Percival three. thankfully looks to have shaken off that leg injury. Hold. Goal three. And now Lussick gets it away. Little jinking run from Lomax. Lussick to Wormsley eating the meters again. Five. Tackled Move 40 down. out. Wants a quick play of the ball. Last tackle. They'll go to Dodd. Dodd is going to just float the kick up high. He's going to invite Evels towards the sideline. He got the ball and he might have got a slap on the chin for his troubles as well there from John Benison. Yeah, John Benison there, pushing it close. Beretta for Imore runs behind his own play and gives himself up as a voluntary tackle. That's OK. Well done, Beretta. Here come Castleford, who are looking to move it at every opportunity. They certainly feel that their left edge is the go-to edge at the moment. It certainly is out there with Kenny Edwards, Jordan Turner and Jacob Mammo. You know, last week when they managed to get back into the contest against Hull FC after being 32 points to six down, it was largely through the involvement of that left-hand side. Well, here they're going the other way and the skill wasn't quite good enough and Saints defence forces an error. Referee surely going to blow up there. Mello was caught, he couldn't get the ball away quickly enough. The Saints' defence was too quick. But just look at the acceleration there. As soon as that ball go, leaves Widdop's hands, the acceleration from Percival to get in the eye line of Mello and test his skill, well, it pays dividends. This is St Helens. First time they've had the ball this far down the field on the boys. opening tackle. And Castleford were exposed, weren't they, last week at Hull from set pieces and... It'll be something seconds. that Saints Let's will have looked at. Well, they conceded exactly. two tries from scrums last week. It looks like they're going to shift out to that right-hand side through Lomax. He takes it on. Well, they potentially had an overlap there, but Lomax deciding just to keep the ball. But here comes St. Helens now, Wormsley. Good first contact on him. A solid hit from George Griffin. Set restart. Set restart, though. Here's Lees, will go forward again. 15 away. Move, back Kenny, Nile. Lussick. Hold. Goal one. 
Gets it away. Here now is Dodd. Gets it to Wellsby. Matautia runs it in within ten. Now within five. Tackle made. Castle have been asked some questions on their own line. Have they got the defensive resolve to hold on as Dodd gets it away? Here now is Knowles. Takes it forward. Right in front of the post. They're lining, lining up left here. Surely that's where they're going. Although Lomax is to the right. The decoy. They go with Wormsley. They've got bodies around him. Balls on the ground. Castle have collected. Yeah, sloppy offload there from the big fella. He just goes into contact, tries to use all of his six foot five frame to offload that ball in almost an impossible situation. And Castleford is first to react. I think it's Griffin who's first to pounce. The offload was potentially on, but he didn't find his yeah, man. Yeah, there was too much traffic around him for that. However, I have seen over the last few years, but that is a better offload as Turner now straightens up. Yeah, former St Helens player Jordan Turner, long distinguished career, all now to Widdop who just had to be wary of Dodd, then he goes in, oh that, oh that looked a little bit high, his head certainly rocked back in the tackle Gareth Widdop who just has a, a glance at the official as Miller goes high and Wellsby will collect. There's a huge disconnect in the chase there from Castleford. T. Ritson now, if he can get on the outside, he's got pace to burn. He has Here got he goes. pace to burn, but look at this, you just see it there, you see the forwards of St. Helens. What was that high? It was just under the chin, not on it. The Saints forward pack though, Kyle, still some of them getting onside, but that's a great carry from Conrad Hurrell. And that's exactly what Castleford will want to do, keep this scoreline relatively close, knowing that the, the Saints have had an awful lot of mental and physical recovery to do over this week. Offload there from Bell. Yeah, good offload as well. Here now is Lomax chinking his way forward. Edwards makes the tackle. St. Helens starting to enjoy some better field position now. What can they do with it? Wellsby's just going to chip over the top. Evans is sweeping up. Nice bounce so for Widdop, who is tackled on his own line. Oh, well read there from Gareth Widdop. Just sees the chip over the top and reacts there before anyone can can get a hand on him, but this is where Saints live in this part of the field, Mark. They really, really tighten up and they go after their opposition. Two tackles gone, four metres made. 16 minutes gone, Albert Vette has gone for a breather already over on the far side. As McShane waits for the play of the ball and it's taken forward now by Watts, who's just come on. Down the short side, they work it, looking now, hands again, Mamo dances down the touchline, needs support, fired the pass inside, he was never on. And St Helens have got it back again, but for the third time, Jake Mamo released down that far touchline side. Oh, he's tiptoeing down there, isn't he? But just a sloppy pass on the inside. Almost whether he could have just took the tackle, stepped back in field, got him on the next play. And they well, panicked. They did, but Saints now are going forward with Bell. Three. Scotland international. Move. Stand up. Goal three. Plays the ball. Lomax. Wellsby. Another four. strong collision move, on the edge of the Are Castleford 20 metre area. Goal four. Joey Lussick gets it away. Dodd. Mataudia gets it away to Wells. We had to put the brakes on as he saw Lawler. Gets a nice pass away though to Bell. Bell finds Hurrell. Hurrell sidesteps his way in, looking to keep it alive. Oh, it's another good offload. Saints going back down the short side, kick ahead, and it's dropped by Castleford. I think that's going to be a knock on from Castleford. Evels couldn't take it in, a little bit off the cuff from St Helens, but they're starting to click into gear now, the champions. Yeah, it was beautiful interplay, wasn't it, from Metaltia back to Wellsby, okay, who man. skips across the right-hand side of the field, threads a kick through, off, and Evals there comes board. up with his second error of the green afternoon. Green that one board. was a much more tricky one to take in. Well, Castleford have created board, chances, but they haven't put any of them away, and now St Helens are knocking on the door, and there's a... A problem there, bit of blood from the... Well, he's got blood all over there, George Griffin. Bit from the eye, bit from the mouth. Who'd be a front rower, Kyle Amor? Yeah, it's a tough old game, isn't it? But George Griffin, he's been around, hasn't he? 30 years old now. Played 26 of the 29 games last year for Castle for Tigers and signed a three-year contract last July. So he's highly thought of here at the club. But just going back to those missed chances, Mark, you don't get... It's not often that you get so many chances against a quality side in St Helens. And you just often wonder 
at the end of this Scott at the end of this afternoon if those afternoon. will be perhaps something that Lee Radford will be scratching his head knowing that a chance gone messing that's where we uh, believe he got like you see there straight away the blood, no, blood above the eye green card. Blood, we have to it's a full game in the oh not just in the front yeah. row wherever you play in the sport of Rugby League, and now St Helens have got a chance to open up their account in the Super League. And now they get it away, Lomax with a pass, it's intercepted, and that looks a high shot this time on Wooden. Well, St Helens, a big chance goes begging for them. Certainly does, I think Johnny Lomax wanted that pass just a touch earlier. It's almost impossible for him to tip that ball on, Mark Percival reacting to the ball in the air and just catches Gareth Wooden high. I don't think there's too much in that, really. It is a penalty, of course, but I don't think there's any malice. I think they're just both competing for the same ball. It probably looked worse than it was, didn't it? But Castleford will be relieved there that their line is still intact. They were way behind, weren't they, early on at Hull last week? I'll tell you what, it's a much better start from them, isn't it? You know, 20 minutes in and nil-nil, a couple of chances gone begging, and they're looking to move the ball once again, aren't they? I really like what they're doing. Two... Well, they think they've found a weakness. They're attacking Hurrell and Ritson over on that far side. Now they come near side. Little run around for Widow. Oh, cries it wide to Faraimo. Faraimo's going to have to try and stay in the field of play, and he'll do that. Good defence there from John Benison. Oh. Big performer last year, wasn't he, John Benison? Out of nowhere. It was. Part of the run to the grand final, the youngster. As McShane jumps out, Widdup has been busy, gets it away to Miller, they've got numbers again here, ball out wide, Mamo just had to jump to catch it, comes back inside, loops the pass to Kenny Edwards, Edwards goes past one, 15 away, last one for Castleford. Approaching the halfway point of the first half, will now the deadlock be broken? Miller is going to hoist it high, but there were no chases there. Benison will catch it on the line. I think the outside back's there, Carl. thought Whoa. that was going through the hands. Yeah, they did, but just look at the kick pressure there on Jacob Miller. I think Miller's actually injured off the back of it. It was a perfectly timed tackle to put kick pressure on to allow that catch to be taken in. And it's the small details about St. Helens that they execute so, so well. Ash Golden mentioned it pre-game. All the little details, well repeated over and over, is what wins your titles. Wormsley, oh. another good run. Move. Miller makes oh. the tackle. Oh. Lusick gets it away. Lomax on the front foot, gets it wide to Conrad Hurrell. Hurrell drives it forward. Five. Move that. Tackle just inside the 40. Oh. Wormsley five. just getting a, a running repair in backfield as Dodd will go yeah. high. Evels should get this, but Knowles has oh. got it. And Knowles collected it. You could Fuck see oh. Knowles. He timed that to perfection. Well, Morgan Knowles, he certainly doesn't miss. He just times that so, so well. Big contact from him. Nice offload from Mamo. Finds Lawler. Well, I said who'd be a front row. Who'd be a fullback? Wow. Oh. Tell you what, you've got to get that perfect, haven't you, Mark? Otherwise, you can find yourself in a spot of bother. Morgan Knowles, such a devastating defender. Oh, looked over the top, play on for Ivo, almost got away. He tried to get it to Broadbent, just couldn't get the pass away. But Castleford expanding play. They're testing out the petrol left in the St Helens tank after a whirlwind couple of weeks for them. I tell you, this is a quality game. High kick goes up, Benison calls for it, gets up high. He'll be used to those types of kicks as well. And a nice well. return from Benison, who, of course, played at fullback a lot last season. Yeah, cover tackle there from Liam Watts after three or four defenders. He escapes the clutches from them. T. Ritson now just dancing in between defenders. It'll be interesting if he gets a clear run today. There'll not be many quicker than him. That's great work there from Kenny Edwards. Out of marker so quick to chop Alex Wormsley down as he leaves the field after a 22-minute stint. Yeah, on comes the veteran Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook. 37 years of age, and here he is now, bringing the ball forward. Over 400 Super League appearances, LMS. He's only one of 14 players to do so in the Super League era. When you think he plays in the front row, high kick, Evans relieved this time that when he looks up, he's not got Morgan Knowles stood right in front of him. And now the ball working its way. Big shot goes in again. Move! 
Evans. Well, I didn't envisage 22 minutes in. We wouldn't have any points on the board. No, it's, a oh. test it's a testament, isn't it, to both sides? Really, I just think Castleford will be so pleased with how they start. Move. How they started the game, sorry, and they've created hold. chances, Mark. Hold. On the balance of play, they've probably edged this competition so far. Jacob Mammo through the middle of the field, he's away. Jake Mammo racing away, he's got support with him, he runs away from Broadbent. Looking for support, now he gets oh, it, Broadbent's there. put it down, and Wellsby's going the other way. Well, Jake Mammo there, he ran away from Broadbent, and in the end, Stand when he up. gave him the ball, it went on the ground, Stand but that is zero. another... Castleford Tigers oh. missed opportunity. Oh, I can't believe the amount of work and good work that Jacob Mammo's done, but the last Don't part of his move. of his detail of his oh. play has been pretty shocking. Go one. Ball going forward. Two. Move. Back end, come on me. Paul. Here with St Ball Helens. Two. Here now is Dodd, gets it away, no, lovely pass to Percival, Percival bumps off one, flick pass inside to Dodd, Dodd going, gets Three. past the uh, four, Move. gets to the fullback who brings Hold him down, back. eight metres away, Saints now, here's Lomax, short pass, Welby, he's over, St Helens lead, the champions despite being under the pump early on in the jungle, they come roaring back, and it's Welby who's in under the post, St Helens lead 4-0. And it all starts, doesn't it? Jake Mammel there, brilliant work once again from him. But he almost just runs out of ideas. You can see he's looking for support, there's nobody there. And he just flicks the pass. And it's not well executed. As a result, Jack Wellsby in again. Yeah. Scored in Penrith last week. Scores in Castleford this week. Yeah. He's 21 years old and he's done it all already. He might as well just quit now. He scores a try to open the account for St. Helens. 4 0 with a kick to come right under the sticks. What a quality, quality player. You mentioned that performance last week. Well, it was out of this world. And it's only his 86th appearance for St. Helens. And again, he's already won and done so much in the game. No Tommy Makinson today, so Mark Percival will be on kicking duties. Looking to turn the four into six, and this is as straightforward as they come. Well, you mentioned that Castlewood will be happy with their start. I'm not so sure. I think they'll be disappointed that they weren't in front themselves, and now they fall behind as Percival steps forward and does make it six points to nil. Well, look, it's a much better, much more improved start, but the execution of it... Johnny Lomax there just playing off the back of a quick run. Eyes open, you just know that when your half-backs and full-backs are just hitting space... It's a good sign from them. And they've withstood some pressure, haven't they, St. Helens? But they've been able to hit back first. Well, we'll get the stats. Mamo has made four clean breaks, and they've got nothing to show for that. You know, there's three errors that's come off the back of his clean breaks. That pass to Nile Evans, the offload. And there was another one in there as well. It's a big carry there, back into Adam Milner, I think it is, off the bench, yeah. Matty Lees. Adam Milner closing in on 300 appearances in his career as well. Two, Ball move. With the wait, wait. Saints oh, side then. Here is McCarthy, Scarsbrook, Watts goes at it. They've met many oh. times. Release, three, wait, wait. Tackle Go away, three. Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook. Ball away here, there's a chance for Bell. Bell breaks through the line, they're trying to get up the middle in support. Bell still there, he's going to put boot to ball, looking for Ritson. Ritson just can't keep it in. Well, James Bell breaks the line, got? but was that the right option? I don't think so. It's tackle yeah, three. Yeah. It's a beautiful move, isn't it, from left to right, James Bell there, dancing in between players. Perhaps if he had his time again, he'd just take it, take the tackle, get him on the next plate. Help me out and don't surrender. And he knows it as well. Okay. He knows it, and those Cass fans are letting him know it as well. One, move! Tigers bringing it forward then. Behind, and they'll feel they should be in front. The fine margins of Super League. Two, move. Oh now, Joey. Wait. Goal two. 
Here goes Griffin. Good carry. Yeah, he's had a couple of them so far this afternoon, George Griffin. Ball taken in, good offload from Watts. Winner gets it away. Here now is Alex Meller. Meller tries to get through one. Good tackle from Dodd. They do so well off the back of an offload as they roll down the short side here. They've got numbers. They have got numbers, and the pass to Faraimo was on, but they didn't take it. Last one, Castle with 20 away. Touchline side, what can they do here? They'll loop the ball to Miller. Miller just puts up the kick. Should be collected by St Helens, and it is. And I think Percival took everybody out there, even his own man, Sione Matautia, but he came up with the ball, and that's what matters. It was a terrible pass from nine, wasn't it? To Jacob Miller. And as a result, he has to step back hard off his left foot and put almost a nothing kick into the air. Percival there to claim. Here is Ritson. Ritson looking to put the... Third. Footwork on Move. early, but Castleman will be fully aware of him. Ball now works its way across. Here is oh. Bell. Move. Having just made that break. Jake oh, Wingfield oh. fresh onto the field now as he takes over. I thought he was pretty much an unsung hero out in Australia. You know, he really mixed up his game. Introduced players onto the ball, but then when he needed to carry the baton forward. There's a kick that it's caught on the full, Saints are there defensively, they'll try getting it away to Mamo, Mamo again puts his head through the tackle again, he offloads, but Miller's got no one to give it to, and maybe Castleford there, just a little bit on heels. That's the danger sign for St Helens, isn't it? Castleford's ability to offload the ball, and as soon as they do it, just watch next time how quick they move the ball out wide, trying to expose space. Kane Robin to the action here. Jumps out of dummy half, Three. replaces Paul Move. McShane. Wanted a quick play of the ball there, Rob, and didn't get one. Evels gets it wide, and Four. good tackle made on the Move. far side. Saints defending so far in this set. OK. Watts gets it away to Edwards. Edwards with a no-look pass out wide. Turner is wrapped up on the 30. Last one, the wind whistles around this old ground. Here now is Miller, gets it away to Widdup. Widdup, not the best pass, gets it away. Broadbench just going to put it high. He'll give chase and should be taken at the back by Wellsby. Broadbent went for the steal and didn't quite get it. Nearly. Two, move. Saints bringing the ball out of their own end. Just the six points so far here at the jungle. Well, there's been plenty Move. to enjoy about this one so far. Castleford have wasted a few opportunities. Ooh, that pass was... Well, that got the crowd interested down below as Move. they thought that went forward, but... You see the possession pretty tight at the moment. St Helens just nudging that statistic. It's a good carry forward. Hold. Goal two. From uh, Sam Royal, who's out there. Lussick wrapped up in the... Dummy half position, here now is Lomax. Lomax gets it away. If that was Dan Norman, wasn't it, who's on on the field? Dan Norman then, he's on it again now. Dan Norman. Oh, oh he's, he's lost, lost it. it. He yeah. lost the ball, That's that came out. Well, just on off the bench to make an impact. That was not the impact he wanted to make. Well, it's his second carry in the set, and usually you don't really want your front rowers doing that, doubling up in carries. Having said that, he has to do better than that there. He just loses the ball too simply. Big Dan Norman, 25 years old, a single appearance for Ireland in the World Cup. Three tries last year for St. Helens. So St. Helens not getting to the end of their set. Let's get in, please. Hands over. Shot clock off. Out. Ball comes out of the scrum. Here is Ferraimo now. Oh, it's a willing runner, and now there's a. Penalty. Yeah, I think it's Percival offside from the base of the scrum. Just jumps the line. It's a penalty. And one thing you can't afford to do on this pitch, it's probably about 10 or 15 metres shorter than any other field, is as soon as you give a penalty away, Mark, you find yourself defending your own line in the blink of an eye. And Castleford are so, so good over the years at exposing that, putting on set plays and executing. Although, having said that, their execution today has probably been the part that's let them down. It has. Here's Milner, he's lost it, went backwards though, picked up by Kane Robb. Robb offers the dummy. He's, oh, he's lost it now. So Castleman are oh, just coming up with a few First errors one. here. First one. Kane Robb. 
What he like uh, became a father this week. What do you like, boys? 50. Arabelle Phoebe. A new addition to the Rob family. We uh, wish all well. Hope they're all safe and well. He'll have had an eventful week. That's for sure. He might be feeling a bit worse than some jet lag players. Lack of sleep. The scrum, maybe. Out! Here now is Percival. Drives it forward. Wraps up. Can Saints Wait. had to their lead before Not the break? One. I think you gave Paul Wellens a two score advantage after the opening 20 minutes here. He would have, well, he would have taken that every day of the week. Oh, look, I think the really message from Paul Wellens is this is round one. Mate, this is round one, and you should be excited, you should be up for it, regardless of how uh, you've been flew all over the world or not. You know, almost talking to, what, talking to Paul earlier, he mentioned the fact that pretty much after today, the whole World Club Challenge oh. thing, we have to move on from it and attack the season as brand new. Well, here they go, looking to inflict Castleford's second defeat of the season as a carry takes them within 15 here. What can Lussick do? He'll get it away now. Dodd just dribbles the kick. Oh, it's dropped by Miller. That's going to be another set, is it? They're going for the corner. It is another set. So Hurrell tackled a metre away, but St Helens here with a wonderful opportunity to score their second try. Ball taken forward. Wiz Mustafa into the action for his Castleford Super League debut. Ball now goes to this near side and the ball out the back. Chance here for Benison. Benison working his way forward. Tackle made. Matautia gets it infield. Lomax gets it away now. McCarthy Scarsbrook takes it forward. Tackle made by Milner and Mustafa. There was a knock on, no. So, well, we've criticised Castleford for coming up with errors. St Helens coming up with a few of their own now. Yeah, it's been a sloppy last five or six minutes for the Saints. And it's Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook on that occasion there. He just tries to roll out with a tackle. Adam Milner all over him. But he does lose possession of the ball. It is an error. And it's Castleford. will survive that attack from Saints once more. You see there. Going to be a scrum then for Castleford. Just over five remaining here. Quite a quiet Weldon Road this afternoon. They're normally quite vociferous, and now they've earned themselves another penalty at the this scrum. Will, yeah, this will be disappointing for Paul Wallens. The fact that they've just gifted field position to Castleford. Has he, kicked, has he kicked this in touch? He hasn't. He hasn't found touch. Oh, T. Ritson's away. Ritson. T. Ritson sidestepping his way forward. Oh. He's tackled. What an error from Castleford. Not finding touch. I think the wind just caught it as he kicked for touch. And now St. Helens have got another chance. Wow, that was such an error. Bell is tackled. Ten away. Norman drives it in. Crashes through one. Well, Milner in, underneath it. They're in trouble here, Cass. They are in trouble, and it's trouble it. of their own making, isn't it? Ball now comes to Lomax. Lomax with a dummy, now gets it to Wellesby. Ball was back down, this is played. Oh, no, Castleford have knocked on again. Able to spill it. How many chances are they going to give the champions? Well, they're just inviting them again and again, and eventually the dam will burst. If Evels would have picked that up, he would have been racing away, but now it's St Helens who are looking for a score. Well, Evels is quick. He had a long way to go, but he couldn't take it in. Lussick, short. McCarthy Scarsbrook hit hard. Good defence from Rob. Castleford are hanging on here. Pressure of their own making. Can they survive another set? Here is Dodd, little juggle, takes on the line. Mustafa with a tackle again. Good contact there. Lussick Weiss goes short, pass hit. Watts, this is going to be another set. Another set restart and another offload. And the line broken and kicking behind. Was that the right decision? For Rymo picks it up. Saints kicking on the first tackle. Paul Wellens will be furious with that. Yeah, just a lack of composure there from the young half in Dodd. It was another it was another set, set again off the back of Liam Watts' error. And a chance to have four sets on Castleford's line. And Lewis Dodd, he just has a bit of a brain explosion and tries to roll the kick in. 
and as soon as Beretta for Rymo takes it, Mark Percival looks round at him, wondering why he put that kick in. Four. What terrific defence from Castleford. I thought Three they down. were going to break Four. then. He just yeah. kept turning up. Their lungs must be burning. Well, they just need the end of the half now, don't they? Nice run from Mustafa. Five. Formerly of Leeds, had a Four. spell at Hull Kingston Rovers. Last one, though. Miller Four. needs to put Four. a big boot on this. He's gone across the field. It's going to bounce on halfway. Benison Four. will pick it up on his own 40. Sakes will return it up towards the halfway Four. line. Move. And now the, Castleford have got two and a half Four. minutes to survive to the break. There's some tired Back bodies down. out there, Hold. not just from the jet lag either. Ball with McCarthy, Scarsbrook Third. up the middle. He's Move hit down. hard. Hold. Kenny Edwards put Wait. in a good shot there. They're trying to get into that hole where he would have been. Here's Hurrell now. Hurrell charges forward. Edwards gets back, makes the tackle, but Castleford are back really on their own line four. again. Big Back-off moments. Four. In the Super League, here now is Lomax, short pass, good leg tackle. Last one, they are loading numbers left. The champions looking for a second score. Here now is Dodd, gets it away, they're going wide, balls on the ground. Well, Castleford, credit to them. Lee Radford was not happy with their defensive effort last week, but this week they have stood tall on their own line. Absolutely, Mark, they just kept turning up, haven't they? And that pass there from Wellsby was a pull of a pass. It perhaps just catches Mark Percival just above his right arm towards the shoulder area. He can't take it in with the opposite centre in front of him. And as you mentioned, Mark, I think Castleford have been fantastic so far. Two, move, wait the ten, wait. Well, Lee Radford wait. wanted a response, and in certain aspects, he's got one. They put in a big second half at Hull last week. They may need to do the same to get the points here. Move Saints leading three. by six, Wait. just the one try. Really six slow six, play, they're all a set restart. Well, with a minute left, that could help Castleford. Can they end down the other end of the field? One. Well, it would set Move. us up for a fantastic half if Castleford could get over inside the final one. 50 seconds. Watch now to Mustafa. They really have a lot on Two. there. I think he'll thank Move. Liam Watts Winning. for that pass Project. at half time oh. as they Goal. go for a cup That's of tea. Here is Miller now, gets it away. They're going back to that left edge again with Turner. Ooh, Almost really got through the tackle. Move. Well, he was pushed in the touch, so that's going to be a penalty. Now there's 30 Tackle's seconds complete. left here. Tackle's complete. Are they going to have to have a shot at goal or are they going to Tackle's take a gamble and give themselves one, la- one go at the line? I think it's incredibly difficult to get a kick from that far out over there. Kenny Edwards with a little short kick by okay. five metres and it's Miller. This is it, last play of the half, counting down now, good tackle, one. Percival gambled Move. down, he read that well, they need Set. one quick play of the ball oh. here, Castleford. Oh, well, they're going to get one, the hooter's gone in the background, Miller goes oh. high, oh. Wellsby the try scorer should catch this, is he going to launch a counter-attack, is Wellsby going to launch a counter-attack, he is, oh. he offloads to Mataltia, Mataltia takes it and he decides oh. enough is enough. <laughs> Well, questions were asked as to what St. Helens would produce here in Castleford after a whirlwind couple of weeks and saw them down under, but they took the lead on the back of Wellsby's try. That came 24 minutes in. Percival added the extras as Castleford trudge off into the dressing room. We'll have all the reaction to come with Adam Danica and Aston Golding is our guest this afternoon. But at the jungle, at the break, it's Castleford Tigers nil, St Helens six. It is a close game, it's 6-0, and there's 40 minutes of high-quality rugby league ahead. It is indeed. Stay behind, boys. There we are, but for a Super League action here from the men host jungle, Castleford nil, St Helens six. As Saints will get first use of the ball in this second half, and another big collision goes in as Watts makes the tackle. Some big bodies involved in there, isn't he? Dan Norman, Liam Watts. Matautia straightens up and leaves Mustafa on the floor. It's a good, hard, direct carry once again from the back rower. Yeah, he's been very good today for St Helens. This fella's been all right as well, Bell. He always looks lively, James Bell, when he gets the ball in his hand. He's got terrific footwork, a gorgeous pass as well. He just looks a little bit injured there as he escapes out of that. Yeah, maybe just got a ball on the head. He's gone down and he 
The physio is coming on to have a look at him. And Saints now with Wellsby will just keep the kick low. Evels will catch it on the first bounce. What's his kick return like? Well, it's into a wall of white. James Bell is fit to carry on in back play, so he's OK. And Castleford now will look to work it out of their own end of the field. What do you think Lee Radford would have said at the break, Kyle? Yeah, just similar to what we mentioned earlier, Mark. Just keep playing. You can't go into your shell and just try and go set for set with Saints. You've got to look to move the ball, create second phase, and just try and catch Saints moving around as well. But crucially, I think just a bit more composure when they get off the, on the back of those oh, breaks and they have no. opportunity to apply wait, pressure wait, to Saints down the other end of the field. That's their best opportunity in order to score a try. Kenny Edwards through the middle now. Looking to promote the ball, great tackle. Five, Last one, they've move. got over the halfway line. Wait. Miller wants the ball down the short side. He will get it now, under pressure again. Oh, yeah. Goes Go high, down. Wellsby waits, no real pressure on him. Wait. He'll catch those all day, you would imagine. Runs at Watts and Watts makes the tackle and the two teams go set for set at the start of the second half. Yeah, and that's exactly what they'd maybe want early on. Just trying to feel the way back into the half before it opens up. We saw Castleford with a blistering start of the first period. All goes forward with Percival. get together! Hold. Lussick White's dummy half gets it away now. They'll move it across to Lomax. Short pass. Tackle made. The Saints fans weren't happy with that shot, but referee says play on. And now the ball with Wellsby gets it away. McCarthy Scarsbrook over halfway. Five. So this is a replay. Ooh, was there a contact with the head there? Possibly so. High kick will. Hold up on the win, Faraimo comes in off the touchline, catches it, but look at the chase again. Drives him back. Yeah, that's perhaps the difference, isn't it, inside of the opening couple of minutes of this second half. You know, the first kick that Wellsby caught, he had an acre of time to catch it, pick his run. Flip that on its head, and Castle Tigers, as soon as they catch the ball, it was Wingfield and company were ready just to meet him head on and tackle. And as a result, there's only three players gone and ten metres made. I just wonder as well if that wind is swirling around now. We saw Castleford fail to make touch in that first half. We thought they had the wind at their back, but I think it's swirling around now. It's a bit gusty as well here in West Yorkshire as Milner makes a great run. That's a good carry. It's a good carry there. Comes hard off his left foot. Able to get in between Metaltia and Lussick. With it goes high, and that one will hang on the wind. Wellsby catches 20 off his own line. Looks to get it away to Ritson. I just wonder there, John Turner would have had an eye on the ball, he maybe could have nicked that. It's good work, isn't it, from the centre, Jordan Turner, just to anticipate that Wellsby can find that pass and give it to the speedster in Young Ritson. I say Young, he's 27, middle of his career, and finds himself on his debut at Super League. Well, it's a bit of a fairy tale, isn't it? He's on a, a season-long loan officially from Barrow in the Championship. Yeah. He spent time at Workington Town in Newcastle. So often there's some good players hanging around in the championship that just need their chance yeah. and their opportunity. Well, here go Saints again. Lomax weaving in and out, gets it to Percival. Percival now 25 away, last one. Move. Get over to that far side. A ball swings in and now it's put up high. Evel should catch this, gets off the ground, ducks under one, but there's another one coming. Well, Saints are pushing Castleford further and further back at the start of every set in this second half, and these are tough metres now for the Tigers. Yeah, it's time to roll your sleeves up, get your outside backs in, just try and create some rook speed, generate something quick. Broadbent's made a couple of good carries out of his own end, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. It's a towering kick there, end over end. And now they're looking to move it out wide, and well, Kenny Edwards could have gone there. He had Mamo outside him, but Edwards straightens up and goes in alone. And now the ball works its way. Here's Milner again. Milner charging forward. Yeah, they're just missing something, aren't they? At the back, off the back of that carry, Kenny Edwards, no one support. Milner on his own. Another high kick will float down, and it's caught by Benison. It's a laboured chase once again, Mark. Contrast the two teams in terms of the kick chase and their effort. Well, as soon as the Castleford Tigers catch it, there's three or four red and white shirts pouncing straight away. Wrapped up. Wrapped up. Wellsby comes down the short side, gets it now, gets it away to Hurrell. Hurrell bumps off Mamo. 
Rob does enough for the offload there. That's great great bounce as well. Lomax is away. Lomax over halfway, looking to use the runners. He's gone Brilliant. through. Lomax has got support. T. Ritson for the corner. And Ritson will score his first Super League try for St. Helens. And boy, did he enjoy that one. But that was down to the brilliance of Johnny Lomax. Outstanding play from an outstanding player. Yeah, well, I'm going to roll back a few more plays earlier and watch Jack Wellsby's movement from the centre of the field. He spots something down this left-hand side of the defence of Castle for Tigers, introduces Conrad Hurrell, and boy, Conrad Hurrell does well. Gives an offload to Johnny Lomax, and then look at this, beats one, two, three, four. Kenny Edwards with a poor attempt, and Jake Mammo with the labour chase back. T. Ritson on the outside, and the boy from Cumbria strikes to give the St. Helens 10-0. Terrific work from Horrell there. Johnny Lomax, there's beats one, That's two, three, four. And they're all just grabbing at air. The poor attempts at tackles, and T. Ritson will... He probably won't get an easier finish than that. <laughs> Delighted for him. <laughs> from your part of the world, of course. Certainly is. Good on the boy. T. Ritson with a try. Then I mentioned he was from Cumbria. Put on a plate. Percival now with the extras from out wide. This is a big kick, a 12-point advantage here. Could be crucial, but you have to say the way the Saints are, are squeezing Castleford in this second half has really paid dividends and led to that chance. But they'll be disappointed there were opportunities to put Hurrell down, to get Lomax down, but once he got Ritson away... That was all over. Here is Percival then, looking to make it two from two. He's kicking towards the St. Helens fans. Sends it on its way. It's a good strike. The champions lead by 12. And that was one of the reasons, Mark, why I said that Castleford Tigers can't afford to take St. Helens on set for set because I don't think they can cope with it. And on this evidence here, you can see why bodies are getting tired. Attempts at tackles are so poor here. Miller and Edwards, far too easy. Brilliance from Lomax. Great support there, like all wingers should do. T. Ritson to score. Here comes Saints again. Now they have the comfort blanket of a second score. Ball carried forward. Milner makes the tackle. Well, Castleford have given away a set restart here, so messing about at the play of the ball. It's just opening up now. You just get the sense, don't you? It's a couple of Castleford players not quite finishing tackles off, and they're just rolling forward with ease. The collision goes in. Well, I think a few eyebrows were raised amongst the Channel 4 crew, as there's an error there from Bell. And an error from Miller, so what will the referee determine here? He'll say a knock on either way. There are a few eyebrows raised earlier on when Aston Golding, our guest today, he went for St Helens by 20. Well, he at the moment is looking uh, closest. Well, I'll tell you why that sort of looks a good shout, because I don't think Castleford Tigers, I can't think of a time when they've had a, any sustained period near St Helens' line. Apart from that Mark Percival cover tackle. They don't look like scoring at the moment. Well, they left themselves a lot to do last week and scored some second half tries that got them back in the contest at Hull. Look at that, metres gain, St Helens way in front, almost 250 more. It's just been a solid performance, hasn't it? It hasn't been their absolute best by any stretch of the imagination, but they've done enough so far. However, there's still 30 minutes left of this game. Well, here's Evans gets it away on the far side. Arimo cuts in, needs to get to ground and does. Better from Castleford. And they will have a purple patch in this game, there's no doubt about that. Here's Griffin taken off his feet. The head bandaged, already spilt blood for the course today. Here now is Widder, gets it to Miller. Miller feigns to get the ball out of his hands, gets it away. Here now is Broadbent going for the corner. Broadbent cuts inside. Oh, was he taken high there? Was he taken high when he's got into touch? But it was Wellsby with a tackle, but there's a decision to be made here. 
Oh, look at this. What happened now? Oh, that's oh, high. Yeah. And that is a problem for St. Helens. There's a huge decision coming in here. Well, it's certainly a try for all money, isn't it? Let's hear from the officials. From Wellsby. And in my opinion, he would have scored the try but for that foul play. So I'm going to give a penalty try. OK, mate. Yeah. He has not gone to the screen here. Liam Moore is that confident that this would have been a try. He's given a penalty try. So Castleford are back in it. Wellsby's not happy. I'm not so sure there. Well, he can't shake his head, Mark. I agree with Liam Moore. This is a dead set try, sorry, from Broadbent. He does well to beat T. Ritson. Jack Wellsby's coming across the cover tackle. He steps off his left foot, and it is a high tackle. Jack Wellsby's left arm just slimes high there, hits him round the neck, and he dead set would have scored. I think it's a correct decision from Liam Moore. Well, the pitchers don't, well, they tell the story there. You can see it for all evidence. I, I think we are that used to, as Widdop is lining up the kick right in front of the post, I think we're that used to officials going to the video referee, we're almost wanting confirmation that that is a, a penalty try. But I'm with you, I don't think Wellsby can have any complaints. It was a high tackle, he's a yard out from the line. Yeah. If he misses him, he scores. Oh, look, you've got to remember that this is, this is no. fractions of a second here. He does so well, doesn't he, Broadbent, in and away there. But Jack Wellsby, the footwork of Broadbent just does him. And the left arm, it is a swing, and he is going to make a cover tackle. And I think, and so does Liam Moore, that that would have been a try. It's the correct decision for me. It's a six-point ball game, game on. Stay down, boys. Well, the referee deeming that the penalty try was a sufficient punishment for Jack Wellsby, who got the try scoring underway, but has now given one away, and Evels did well to catch it, gets it away to Mustafa. So Castleford, an unexpected way back in for them, they got a penalty that got them out of their own end, and all of a sudden, they're right back in this match. Well, it was around this time last week, over at Hull FC, where they woke up and just started backing themselves and playing. Will we get a repeat of that here today? Well, the ball now works its way to Evels. We're hearing that Dan Norman has left for Phil. He's got a head injury assessment in the midst of that try as Kane Robb jumps out of dummy half. Oh, Miller's going to get filled in. You could see that coming. Sione Mataldia says, get some of that into you, Jacob Miller. Oh, he flattened him, hit him with everything. High kick, Dennison underneath it. Catches it, will bring it back. Castleford looking to put the squeeze on. Edwards on Wellsby. Look at this. Bang. Oh, that's a rib tickler for you there, Mark. To the new rugby league fans out there, that's known as a rib tickler. Oh, and there's no contact going. Rob on that occasion, hunting Percival. Well, the intensity's just lifted here. Ball now comes to Lomax. Hurrell up against Turner. Turner gets him. Miller trying to bring him down, but Hurrell showing his strength. Look at that. Sheer determination. Can Saints hit back straight away? Wellsby floats the kick over the top. He turns around Evels. Faraimo is going to get there. Now he needs to get back in the field of play. And he does that beautifully and pinches 10 metres. Great kick return. That was a brilliant kick from Jack Wellsby. An even better return from Faraimo. It hits Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook and does he does so so well to get another 10 metres. Brilliant stuff from the winger. It might be chilly in West Yorkshire, but the temperature on the field has just gone up a couple of notches with that Castleford response. The tackles are flying in. Is that Lusik? No, it's a problem for Lees in back play. Lees it is, who's holding his head. Ball now here with Watts. Watts on the angled run, looks so offload. Here we go. Gets it away to Kane Robb. Robb puts his head down through the tackle. Oh, almost lost it in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's been good, Rob, off the bench, hasn't he? He has. He's certainly injected a bit of goal forward, hasn't he? Five. Yeah, anything quick, he's away. Goal five. Ball now goes forward, high kick. Castleford are going to try and compete for it. They couldn't quite get to Benison. Move. 
and the tackle is made over on the far side. Well, if Caterpillar are going to get anything out of this game, this is an important set. Attack St. Helens with the ball through the defence. Interesting that Castle would have had a little bit of a reshuffle, haven't they? Jake Mamo has gone Move. off, hence Broadbent is on this wing now. Hold! Goal third. There's a ball here with Bell. Bell carries Four. St. Helens Move. working their way out. All of a sudden, Four. 25 remaining, one score game. Ball carried forward. Five. Move! Not to the with me. Hold. halfway Four. line. Ball now goes high. Evels has got to come into pressure to get it. I'm gets going. there and gets the ground quickly. One. Tries to get back up, but Move. he's tackled oh 15 goal. off his own line. Once again, Kane yeah. Rob there. Just not allowing Lewis Dodd two. to dictate where that Move. ball goes with boot. Brilliant kick ball. pressure from him. Here's Miller. Turner. Third. Turner wraps up. Broad bent on his bike again, gets away. Hurrell drags him by the collar. That's good work from Marker there, Conrad Hurrell doubling his efforts up. Edwards gets a nice pass away. Here's Milner back on the angle. So Castle on halfway, last one for them. Kane Robert, dummy half. There's a Saints player down in the rook. Widow under pressure from McCarthy. Scarsbrook gets a high one. Taken again by Wellsby. Makes it look so easy, doesn't he? The youngster. You just get a sense, yes, there's 24 minutes on the clock, but the next score is huge in this game. We're into that part of the second half now where fatigue's setting in. St. Helens, Wormsley back out there. Paul Wellens deciding he needs the big guns in the middle of the field to make some big metres and maybe a couple of breaks. There's a potential 40-20 sliced out wide and... That will go in a touch. I don't think Castle would be too worried about that. Yeah, Joey Lussick there just scratches his head. You know he doesn't quite make the connection he wanted to on that. Looking for a 40-20. There we go. Joey Lussick, you mentioned there with James Roby's absence. Yeah. Gets on, a, a rare start. Okay, mate. Well, it's go. crucial that the club start looking beyond the years of James Roby. He can't go on forever. No, he was ever present last year, Joey Lussick, but only eight starts in amongst 32 appearances. But we know it is a 17 player game these days. There's a ball now with Widdup. Widdup gets it to Miller. Miller short to Edwards. Oh, he had Evels there. Just look at the shirts that turn up on the inside, Mark. Anytime they move the ball, St. Helens, there's almost an umbrella of red and white shirts underneath the ball. We see it there again. Three men into the tackle, finding nowhere for them to go. And that's probably a reflection in the metres made. Here now goes Widdup, gets it away to Evels. Evels gets it now, trying to work his way forward. Wrapped up 25 out, last one. Wants to play it quickly. Widdup, the go-to man, gets it away to Miller. Miller hoists the kick out wide. Hurrell trying to get underneath it. Castle for catch it, but they can't keep it alive. Turner just couldn't get down to pick it up. They've done well to keep it alive there, and Jordan Turner, Broadbent, just out jumps there. I think Hurrell gets in the way of Ritson. Yeah, and Broadbent's pass. It's just round the ankles of Jordan Turner. The cover defence was coming across. Well, of course, on Channel 4 last weekend, we saw St Helens in 80 minutes draw 12 all before... Well, An extra time golden there. point drop goal, so to become the world club champions. Will we need golden point today? Perhaps so. Release to get Saints the down their own end of the field. Their fans are trying to roar them on. I think the Castleford, they still haven't really had any play of the balls in their opposition 20 metres old. You don't really see them. Scoring from deep within their own half. Yes, they're making half breaks, but they need to have a period of, of sustained pressure. There's a 40-20 attempt again from Lussick. Yeah. Broadbent's there. He is, and he gets a good roll on it, though, Lussick. So Broadbent will have to bring it off his own line, and Broadbent fancies taking on Ritson, who gets his man. Here now goes Jordan Turner. Turner almost got through a gap. Here's Mustafa. 
He's not the biggest, but he does work really hard, doesn't he? Moves Mustafa. He spins out of the tackle well, so often finds his front for Rymore now, gets rid of Percival, offloads there, the ball through the middle of the field is Evolts. Here's Evolts now, Evolts trying to burn off Wellesby, no change there, Wellesby gets his man, and here now McShane gets it away to Miller, Miller going alone, maybe he went the wrong way, Castleford, last one for them. Are they going to come back to the centre, Griffin? Oh, he should be kicking, should he? The big man, that oh, is that an is absolute awful. awful end. And Lee Radford will be going ballistic. Castleford there had two tackles 10 metres out, and they came up with nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm gobsmacked what I've just seen, and no doubt Lee Radford will be as well. George Griffin, the ball shouldn't end up in his hands, but that kick over the top from him. You'd imagine, he's, oh. even if he just runs it on the ground, at oh. least you're going to have to make St Helens bring it off their own line. Well, instead of turning the ball over two metres away from St Helens' line, you now two. play two. Move. And Saints on this next Only carry should way. cross over the halfway. Two. And that's the difference. Adam Milner goes on, searching there. The Lees rides that out. Oh, that looked that's a penalty and as that well. That is a penalty. So they've compounded that poor end to the set with a penalty. I tackle. Some and if St Helens, sorry, can get over the line down this end of the field and score a try, well, they've only themselves to blame, Castleford. Well, why George Griffin was in that place at that time will be reviewed, I'm sure, by Lee Radford during the week, but it could be a pivotal moment in this match. Well, I mentioned how they hadn't sustained any sort of possession down that end of the field. The simpler play would have been for Miller just to roll it in behind with a kick, at least ask a question. Did you ever roll any kicks in in your day? No, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> one, move, all go one. Here's Wormsley. Come on, Paul. Gets away. it away. James Bell trying to get to an edge, bumps off Miller, tries to bump off Edwards. I always like it how the, the prop forwards know what should happen, but when put in that position, they very rarely do it. <laughs> ball goes centre field. Here come St. Helens. Maybe Warms he's going to put one on the board for the front rowers union. He's tackled 10 away. Saints now looking for a chance to open up that score line again. Here's Lomax takes on the line. The tackle there from Milner. Lomax just checking his honesty, stepping hard off his right foot. Here now. Goes Lussick, Lussick trying to work his way to the line, but oh! Evolds is all over him, Let's last one. Away. Castleford is short of numbers. Oh, if Saints go through the hands, they've tried to power over with Wormsley. Dumps the ball fine. on the ground. Now they're going to that edge. Dodds, dummies, Dodds is wrapped up, gets oh, it away to Lomax. Lomax looks for Ritson out wide. Ritson can't take it in. Castleford, I think, has got a hand on that. And Saints are going to get the ball back here. Big moments for the Super League, four-time defending champions. Well, look, that's what I was talking about earlier. Look how St Helens end their set. They contest it, don't they? They make it a lottery. A 50-50 there on that far side. And as a result, they'll get the ball back and they'll just continue to apply more pressure. It's the hardest part of the field to defend your own goal line. Takes so much energy out of you, so much organisation as well. Ball now to Dodd, gets it away, Matautia, we're about to see Dan Norman come back on, he's passed his head injury assessment for St Helens, good news for them. Ball now, centre field, forward goes Knowles, they came racing out, Castle would have been asked some big questions here, what can Saints do, they go left to Lomax, Lomax, good defensive tackle from Ferraimo there, he came racing off the touchline. Had to be as well, ball and all tackle. Saints had a lot of ball in the first half in this type of area of the field, didn't do a lot with it. Can they do something? I mean, will they look at a one-pointer potentially here to give them that two-score lead? They want more than one point, though. Ball now goes through the hands. Here's Wellsby. Little dummy gets it away. Bell tackled. Last one. Castleford are holding on. They're starting to blow. Can they survive one more? Wellsby stabs it through. And here he is. The big front rower, Alex Wormsley. Right place, right time. Saints extend their lead to 10. Wellsby the provider. Wormsley on his 250th St. Helens appearance. Blood pouring, but scores the try that might win it for Saints. Alex Wormsley there. His 250th appearance, Mark, like you mentioned. 
You called at the front row and might possibly get a try this afternoon. And it's a delicate, gorgeous kick there from Jack Wellsby. Try scorer at the it's first of the game, Jack Wellsby, and try provider here for the fourth try of the afternoon. And it's a soft, beautiful little kick there. Alex Wormsley flat knows that that's an option of Wellsby's and just able to get the bounce and get over. Get well, Warms, he might have to get that ear sorted out. Are we going short cell for what? Yeah. The no. doctors no, there to the sort that team. out. Well, the physio. Well, one prop at one end comes up with a kick that turns over the ball, and at the other end, another prop scores a try that might just win the match. And that's been the difference, Mark. That's something that we've mentioned a couple of times now is what St Helens have been able to do from try line to 20 metres out of the Castleford end is an absolute world apart from what Castleford have been able to do. George Griffin there with that kick that just invited St Helens to clear their own lines. They come away with a penalty off the back of that. Saints put a couple of sets together. And in the end, they just fall the way over the line through Wormsley. Keep on doing what we're doing. It did take a kick to undo them. Percival looking to make it three from three off the kicking tee here. And that is exactly what he does. 18 points to six. They're loving it, the Saints fans. Uh, you can do, mate. Yeah, been going and this is the try. And this is the kick. So much time. And Warmsy on the end of it. It was as good as a pass, wasn't it? He enjoyed that one, Wormsley. He Thanks. certainly did. His little half-back, mate. Yeah, Jack Wellsby there providing Alex Wormsley with his 47th try in 250th games. And he's there again, the big fella. He's everywhere at the moment. Well, just as it looks as though Castleford were going to get the ball back from a short restart, Alex Wormsley steps in. There's an offload again from Conrad Hurrell. He's been great. He at has. doing that, just attracting players in and around him, supplying a late offload. Two, the short kick off there gets all contested, all, all tangled Hold. up. Hold. Big Hold. Alex Walmsley in the middle of the field, ends up almost on the touchline. Well, he will be one of the names I'm sure that Kyle considers Hold. when he selects our Release, Betfred Hold. player of the Hold. match. We we'll get his Hold. opinions on that in. Round about ten minutes or so. Four, move Liam. All the way, lads, all the way. Go Ball forward. just over the halfway line. Here goes Wormsley again. Wormsley bumps off one, bumps off oh, two. He's, in the mood he's rampaging forward. Five. Well, we said, what, with 25 move. minutes left, that Paul Wellens had put his big guns out there and his big guns have come out firing. But that will be the turnover. Bell wrapped up, but not a bad place to give the ball to Castleford. Yeah. Jack Wellsby just gives his front rower a pat on the head, gets rid of Kenny Edwards, Miller, and Jordan Turner. There is still time, just under 13 remaining here, but Castle Football will be getting desperate pretty quickly. As Saints just starting to have more of the ball. 57% now for them. As Vete is back into the action. Lee Radford needs a similar response to the one that Alex Wormsley provided. McShane to Miller, finds Widdup. Widdup ball over the top, caught in the end by Faraimo. I don't think he was the target, and then as a result, has to lose ground. And there's a player down, I think it's Griffin who's gone down. And he might be about to get run over here. In fact, he does. One of the St Helens players just tripped over him there. So the referee will stop play, and it is George Griffin who's been in the wars today who is down, about to get some treatment. Thumbs up, he's OK to go on. Because I've stopped the game, mate, it's either a green card, or by HIA. Ball over the top there from Gareth Widdup. Wasn't quite... I've had to stop the game, mate, because he's been in the way. Oh, it was never here, there. Oh, there, was it? Was it Mellors? Was it for Rymos? What's that, mate? Yeah. What are you choosing, mate? Are you going to take him... George Griffin. He just got a nudge in the back, didn't he, as the, uh, yeah. the Saints player was trying to get round him. He is going to go off, I think, here for a head injury assessment, I think. Griffin. 
Just see it here, the player going past there. Yeah, it's Lees runs into the back of him. No malice in there. No, I don't think so. There's no way Matty Lees would have been looking to do that. He'd obviously been watching the ball. You know. Just look at the speed of this defensive line from Saints. Well, look at the speed of the passing, oh. but Turner couldn't take it in. Conrad Hurrell was right up in his face. And Hurrell with a big smile and says, there you go, Jordan. But they're able to get up that far on the edge because of the work under the ball. Mind you, the thing is, if he if catches, he catches that, that pass, yeah. it was on. Okay, if he catches man. that, we're saying that it's far too easy to get around them. Because they left have created two on none, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, they have, they have. You know, you, you just, you can't help but think back to the very start of the game, can you, Mark? And just wondering if those opportunities had been iced. Are we looking at a different scoreline, a different game, in fact? Yeah. Ball now goes across the towards the 20 metre line. St Helens leading by 12. 11 minutes remaining here. Well, this was a tricky trip. Move. Whatever Saints have Stop done last week. Goal. Well, they've come here and they've done a very good job so far, and they might be about to put it to bed now as Lees five. rumbles inside move. five metres. Yeah, they're hanging on here, Mark. They are, they're going to move it wide, not the best pass. Dodd did well to take it in. He's now going to put the kick in, but that was a poor one. And Evans tries to counter-attack, but the tackle is made. And it was Dodd defending, defending his own poor kick there, as now they're going to move it wide to Turner. Turner tries to bump off Hurrell, but Ritson is there to add some weight to the tackle. And Castleford are running out of time here. Broadbent's tried hard, oh. and Broadbent is away. He needs support, can't get away from Wellesby. Gets it to Turner, and Turner has dropped it again. And St Helens will come back the other way, and they're over the halfway line. That might have been Zero. the Castleford Tigers' last chance. Yeah, it was terrific work again, wasn't it, for a Broadbent? I've been impressed with him. His footwork's been exceptional. Jordan Turner comes up with another spill. One. Well, this is it. Broadbent's been good, Ball hasn't out. he? Got the pass Ball away, but... Yeah, that one perhaps was just a little bit behind Jordan Turner. Can almost be forgiven for that. But again, Mark, it's the Two. execution and the last Move pass down. that's let Castleford Ball down here Ball. today. It has. There'll be some good things for Lee Radford to take out of this, despite the result. Oh. Oh. He's going again! He's unstoppable! What a score from Alex Wormsley! Brought on with 25 minutes left to go and see the game out for the champions. And Wormsley has just steamrolled through the Castleford defence. And he is blowing the big man. But it's two tries for Wormsley. A day to remember for him. St Helens, the champions. Their defence is off and running again. Well, he's regarded as one of the best front rowers in the world. 197 metres against St George, 183 in a World Club Challenge final. And this is just brutal, sheer size, weight, willingness to get over the line. He just, he just runs through Kenny Edwards like he's not even there. In between him and McShane, both left in a pile behind. And that is a terrific try from the big front rower. Take a bow, Alex Wormsley. I know it sounds pedantic, Johnny, but he's just like... Well, what a player. What a career. His career started, didn't it, down the road from here at Batley in the Championship. Yeah. And he's gone on to become one of Super League's finest. 22 games for Batley 10 years ago. And now 250 here today for the Saints. He's 48th try as well. What a find, what a return he is. He's provided this club. And it's just... Let me tell you, look, i played many years with Big Al and I've seen him being able to change the momentum of games and win games on his own through his hard carries and he's able to do that and be devastating with the ball because of the people in and around him. He'll be first to accept and acknowledge that. Morgan Knowles, Matty Lees, the latest ones who are just able to be there and defend and do a lot of good work for him because he is the best ball carrier, certainly in this competition, if not the world. Well, Lomax is going to look to add the extras from 10 metres in. Floats it delicately between the posts. Well, Lomax created the opening try. But this one was all about one man. And it's that man, Alex Wormsley. 
It's six try double in 250 St Helens appearances. You get the feeling there'll be a few more yet as Castleford goes short again. And this time they should get the ball back. They do. Milner drops upon it, but the damage has been done. Yeah, well, you wouldn't bet, yeah, bet past the hat trick at this moment, would you? Sam Royal now enters the field. And just going back on that run there, just gets in between Kenny Edwards. Just far too easy. Kenny Edwards, of course, came up with eight missed tackles over at Hull. And he's come up with an error now. It's gone from bad to worse for him. Edwards spills the ball, so it's going to be back-to-back -back defeats for Lee Radford at the start of the season. The Castle and Tigers, two tough-looking fixtures, but they've been better today than maybe they were at Hull last week, Kyle, and there's plenty of good things to take out of this performance, but still it'll be a tough pill to swallow, won't it, for Castleford? Oh, yeah, you know... We mentioned, haven't we, perhaps if those opportunities let's had been started. nailed earlier, Ten but seconds. let's credit let's Saints as well. You know, the Mike Percival gas. tackle early on kind of just set the tone for where they were off. defensively. And whilst we accept they haven't been brilliant with ball and in hand, they've certainly done a job here. And what an effort it is to come back after One. a World Club challenge, the, the mental and physical Hold emotion on. poured into that game, and to come here wait, with a 24 wait, points wait. to six scoreline oh, in a very, very right. difficult yeah. place to come. And the Castleford Tigers, they are searching for that first win. But it's not going to get much easier for them. Two very, very difficult away trips to Catalan and Huddersfield. They could be facing none from four. Well, they did. I think lost their first five games last season. Castleford, uh, and ultimately only missed out on the playoffs in the final week of the regular season. You don't want to get behind too far too early. No. Well, they were, they were pretty good here at home last year. They were only beaten four times on this soil. Well, here comes Saints again. Oh, interception, and Faraimo is away. Has he got the pace, though? They're chasing him back. Faraimo looking to add to his double last week. Will score. Castleford in at the corner. Uh, hang on, they might be about to check this. There was... Did he get this down in the field of play for him? Well, he's very close. They just do want to check this. It was an intercept. Did he stay in the field of play? Well, this, if he didn't get it down, would sum up Castle and stay. Let's hear from the video referee. Okay, so we're checking the touch and goal line. Primo is in possession of the ball. Ooh. Have we got a behind shot on that case, or is that the best we're going to get? Can we go back? A, can we go back a frame, please? I don't think he gets that down, Mark. Yes, please. Thank you. Right, I think I think the first view is probably going to be the best the best angle. Okay, if, if it, the grounding is simultaneous, it will be no try. So can, can we go nice and slow on the first angle that I get? Okay, it, it, it's simultaneous. So I'm happy I've viewed the angles, I've made my decision. Well, oh Castleman's afternoon might just be about to get a little bit more frustrating. How on earth has Beretta Farimo not scored? How on earth has he not scored? He's been judged to have simultaneously hit the whitewash and put the ball down. Oh, Kyle Amor, there's nobody there. He's got to score. He has to score. He has to score, the referee, like you said, Mark, has judged that that ball and his elbow hit the floor at the same time. The right elbow's on the try line. And Beretta for Raimo, as embarrassing as that is for him. Zero. Johnny Lomax breathes a sigh of relief as he just puts the ball down on the touching goal line. One. 
There'll be people at home wondering it was very tight. The facts are for Imo should not have even left the decision to be made there. Oh, it's a big error, that. But I don't think it, of course, affects or changes the outcome of the game. But probably like what we've said a number of times, Mark, it's just that's where this Castleford side have been in this game. Just that little bit on the end of every play that's been a chance. The Wormsley now, he's dummy half and he's going again, he's thinking about offloading. Well, there's your answer to James Roby. <laughs> Here is Lomax, Lomax gets it away, oh, Lee's on the carry. charge, tries to offload it, bounce backwards, Castleford will get it back. Swinder. Right, let's get our Betfred player of the match, oh, Kyle Amor, I think we know who you're going to pick. Yeah, it's got to go to the number eight, Two. Alex Wormsley, Move. Two tries, his second stint Three. was incredible. Oh. It rounds off a very special couple of weeks for him, some big, big performances. I must give a special mention as well to Sione Mataltia. I thought he's been brilliant as well in this game, but the Betfred player of the match goes to St. Helens number eight, Alex Wormsley. Yeah, two try bursts at the end to wrap things up as an offload from Vetti. Vetti here now is Turner. Turner trying to get away from Hurrell. Goes back in field to McShane, finds Mustafa. Mustafa gets it away now. Castleford going through hands. Too little, too late for them. They wanted a penalty, they'll get one on halfway. He'll discipline from Saints. Yeah, Matty Lee's there, just with a little bit of a swinging arm over the top of George Lawley. He's trying to cover defend. Nothing too much in it, just a catch around the head. Come on, boys, passed on. Passed on by the ball, boys. Got a place there. But to only concede six points okay, here today. Go. Paul Wallens will be delighted with that. Lou McCarthy scars brought there on Vette. Well, He'll be delighted with that. There's things to fix up, of course there is, but for but for the Saints, it is round one, and they start 2023 off with a win. All over the top for Broadbent. Did he stay in the field of play? Well, it doesn't matter because Johnny Lomax is there. Whoa. Johnny Lomax is always there. Oh, he's been good as well Back today. Johnny Lomax, Pause. just a constant threat with the ball. Organises and backs this side around the park. Only experience in the world, Move. the 32-year-old. Battle me. Hold or fall, hold. Goal two. All played here. Goes Benison, one of uh, several changes for Paul Wellens today. And as he proved last year, a more than able part of this St. Helens squad. That are looking to make it five grand final wins on the spin. A lot to happen before we get to the end of the season, but Saints have started as they mean to go on, and they might be about to add to their tally. Bell. Gets it away. Here now is Dodd. We thought about the little kick there. We're hearing that George Griffin has passed his head injury assessment. He probably won't come back on now, but that means he's available next week. Had he have been failed it, he would have been out next week. Here now go Saints again, putting it up high. Ball knocked backwards. Widdop's going to have to deal with this. And Widdop will knock the ball dead, and that's going to be a goal line. Drop out, there he is, our Betfred player of the match. 250th St Helens appearance today. What a okay, outstanding boys. performer he there. has right. been. Two tries today and he is the Betfred player of the match. Much to the delight of the St Helens fans. This hasn't gone 10, or did it go 10 over the touchline? This is going to be tight. If that ball hadn't have gone 10 metres, then St Helens would have had a penalty, but... It bounced short, but I think it's passed over the 10 metre line. Might just see it from this angle. Saints let it bounce there. Where did it go out? Yeah, I think the touch judge couldn't have been any closer. Castleford get it back, but they're going to go to a second straight defeat. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. And the worrying thing for Castleford is those fixtures that I've mentioned coming up next. Catalan Dragons, always a very difficult place to go. Of course, they got a win over the Lee Leopards yesterday. And Huddersfield Giants as well. A lot's been mentioned about their squad. And Cass, and there's plenty of work to do, and they're going to have to fix it quickly. And Albert Vette there loses the ball. And that there, with three seconds to go, pretty much sums up the day. Well, a lot was made about how St Helens would react to 
World Club Challenge glory in Australia last weekend. They came to Castleford, always a tricky task at the best of times. But Alex Wormsley led from the front. His two try second half stint took the game away from Castleford, who wasted some glorious opportunities, especially in that first half. It was always going to be a big ask for Castleford. We've got all the reaction to come with Adam Hill, Stanica Prim and with our guest Ashton Golding. We'll hear from both camps as well, as well as our player of the match. All that to come. But it's been a very, very promising start to the season for St Helens. They've come here and they've got the job done. The Tigers have been silenced. It's Tigers 6, St Helens 24.